What's it like being back here? It's quite emotional. Mm. This is the story of a man who committed a brutal murder, but then used violence to save the lives of others when he intervened to stop a terror attack. Tonight, Steve Gallant returns to London Bridge for the first time and describes his journey from a prison cell to a story of redemption. In 2005, Steve Gallant, then 28, was sentenced to life in prison for his part in the murder of Barry Jackson in Hull. During his time inside, he met Jack Merritt, one of the workers for the rehabilitation charity Learning Together. They organised the conference that took place on the 29th of November 2019. But among the former prisoners there that day was Usman Khan, who used the event to launch a savage knife attack, injuring several and leaving Saskia Jones and Jack Merritt himself dead. After a desperate scuffle on London Bridge, Usman Khan was shot dead by police. But in the terrifying minutes before they arrived, Steve Gallant found himself in the middle of a major terrorist incident in the very heart of London, face to face with the attacker. He came towards me and he opened his jacket and showed me what was a, uh, an explosive belt strapped to his waist. I, I think he wanted to scare me off. But he was in the midst of a killing spree, you know, and I couldn't just walk away. And for some reason, I, I did, I, I assumed it was fake. And, and then um, I looked next to me and there was a, a, a chap next to me holding out a Norwell tusk. So... What is that? Is it a whale tusk? Yeah, it's, a, it's, a, it's actually an elongated uh, tooth. Uh, so I thought, great, I, you know, I'll, I'll use this to, to take husband on. The idea was really, for me, was just to you know, occupy him or keep him busy until uh, the police arrived. He's swinging his knives trying to get at me. I'm keeping enough distance just to keep myself safe. And I managed to whack him again with the Norwell tusk, but this time it snapped over him. He, um, he then came running towards me because I'm unarmed now, so I've backed off. So did you make the decision you needed to try and drive him out of the building? Well, he, he made his way towards the front door and then um, suddenly just burst his way out. So he's now outside, uh, outside the building on London Bridge. Uh, he, somebody shut the door behind him. but. For me, I thought, you know, there's people out there, they're, they're completely unaware of what's just about to hit him, so I opened the door and went out and followed him out onto the street. And I, you know, saw ladies walking towards him, completely oblivious, so I, I you know, I shouted, get back, he's a terrorist. And then others come out of the building and join me. Um, there's John Crilly with the fire extinguisher uh, and Darren Frost with another Norwell Tusk. Uh, and then they gave chase to Usman Khan as he ran off down towards London Bridge, so I followed suit. There was a bit of scuffling. I think Usman Khan did manage to get back to his feet mm. for a short while and he ended up getting back down again. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, within a minute or so, police arrived, jumped out of the cars over these barriers and mm. executed Usman Khan. Executed? Yeah. Shot him? Shot him dead. What's it like being back here? It's quite emotional. Mm. Jack Merritt lost his life here, Saskia Jones. Mm. Uh, a lot of things happened that you know, changed many people's lives forever. Mm. Yours too? Mine too. I'm lost in admiration for the, the bravery of uh, Stephen Gallant and indeed others who went to the assistance of members of the public uh, on that day and, and fought a, uh, a very determined terrorist. It's not every day that a Prime Minister stands up at the dispatch box and praises a prisoner. How did that feel to you? It felt good. It felt good. Not just because you know, it was me, but because what happened there represented so much of what I believe in, you know, that people can change. I think it symbolised a, you know, a really important moment um, that, yeah, captured a lot of people's imagination in the sense that actually, you know, you can, you can change, you can do something bad and do something good. And mm -hmm. I, I hope that it inspired other prisoners. I mean, you did do something bad. You, you killed a man. Yes. How do you ever come to terms with that? Well, it's, I mean, 
you have to come to terms with it in some way because I think you have to be able to move forward. If you don't, if you don't come to terms with it and try to understand it, then you, how do you move forward? How do you feel about the man you murdered? I deeply regret the fact that I have taken someone's life. And I, I understand and I accept nobody has the right to take someone's life or use violence. So that's, um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I've had a lot of time to think about that and that's um, obviously... Um, it's so extraordinary because you are, in a sense, and not many people want to, to accept this, you are proof that certainly in some cases prison works. Prison can work, but I think it's got to come from within. If you don't want to change, nothing can change you. What decided you in prison that you wanted to change? The impact, the collective impact of being sent to prison and seeing everybody devastated had a profound effect on me. Very early, very early in my sentence, and it was that what made me make a firm decision to change, educate myself, and uh, never use violence again. It had obviously worked enough for you to be in the Fishmongers Hall at this event, which was the first time you'd been out of prison at all, right? That was my first day out. So I previously I'd been in, in, in close conditions for 14 and a half years. And talk to me about Jack Merritt, who was your kind of mentor, right? Jack was amazing, you know, very intelligent, very caring. You know, this guy was passionate about his, his role and you know, he had such a profound effect on so many people in the prison system. And so not only is it sad that he was murdered in that way, in that terrible way, and, and of course, Saskia Jones too, but he had affected positively so many people's lives in the system and the, the work that he could have continued doing, you know, it's such a shame that somebody so powerful at, at such a young age uh, has been taken from us. He died and you lived? Yeah. Is that hard to deal with? It's profound, isn't it? Somebody so brilliant and, and, and beautiful and, and, and caring and, you know, but I think the important thing is that those of us who knew Jack and understood his type of work do our best to you know, extract some of that goodness and continue that work in his name. How do you hope to give back in the long term? You know, I've been some dark, dark places, but if I can you know, extract something from that, and, and you know, in a way that actually says, look, you don't have to go for the same path, you know, you can avoid that, you know. I've been there, I've done that, you know. Just take, take my advice on this, avoid that. Uh, and you know, if someone can take from that, then, then great, yeah. Well, Steve Gallant, thank you so much for talking with us. Thank you.